Hey everyone, I'm Raku and I'm proud to present you a tutorial series on air combat maneuvering. You may have guessed it already by my accent, English is not my native language, so please excuse any linguistic errors. I produce mainly tutorial series for the, for the German DCS community, but in, uh, in lack of pictured material, showcasing and explaining maneuvers, I decided to produce the series you're watching right now in both German and English. The whole series is heavily based on the excellent work of Lino in his document, watch out, German ahead, Luft, Luft, Lenkflugkörper und Luftkampfmanöver in DCS World, which uh, roughly translates to air-to-air -air guided missiles and air combat maneuvering in DCS World. I will provide a download link to the document in the description, but for now it's only available in German and I don't know if it will get translated. So you will see pictures from it from his guide in my videos and I will shortly repeat the theory he has written for each maneuver in the respective video. This series, and you might have guessed that too, will focus on the air combat maneuvering part of the mentioned document. Every video I will produce for you will deal with uh, one maneuver, starting with the most basic ones, for example the aileron roll and barrel roll, and advancing into more complex maneuvers with a two-ship flight. In each video we will take a look at the execution and advantages or disadvantages of the maneuver, as well as, of course, see and analyze the maneuver from the cockpit POV and within tech view. In case you're new around here and don't know TechView, it's a great, great program to analyze sorties and engagement afterwards. I will put a link to it in the video description too. Okay, in the German counterpart of this introduction, uh, I would now ask my viewers to go and read chapter 5 of the aforementioned document, as this will be the basis for the rest of the series. But in lack of an English version, I will have to summarize it for you. Uh, as an alternative, you can go and watch uh, The Art of the Kill, an excellent video that was released together with Falcon 4 a few decades ago, and you will find a link to it in the video description too, but be aware that it is an hour long. If you instead prefer a short summary, then we will just introduce and clarify a few terms to help us understand the geometry of two fighters maneuvering in order to shoot each other down. So, the basic fighter maneuvers, or BFM, generally describe how fighters maneuver in a one-on-one -on -one scenario. And they are the basics, hence the name, of all further tactics and techniques. We will now introduce and explain a few terms commonly used when describing the geometry of an air combat. The position geometry, the attack geometry and the weapons envelope. These are the, well, the basics of the basic fighter maneuvers. Let's start with the position geometry. The position geometry tells us about the relation of two flying objects. Better to say, the relation two flying objects are in. Here we have the angle off, sometimes referred to as, uh, as the heading crossing angle. And the angle off is the angle in degrees between my heading and the bearing to a boogie. In other words, is it uh, the difference between my own heading and the boogie's heading. If the angle off between me and the boogie is zero degrees, then the boogie flies parallel to me. The second variable in the position geometry is the range. And I don't think that needs any further explanation, it's really only the range from my plane to a boogie. The third and last one is called the aspect angle or the angle of tail. Just like the angle off, it's measured in degrees, but this time from the boogie's tail to my position. The aspect angle is a, is a measurement to determine how far away I am from the boogie's 6 o'clock position. And this is generally where you want to be in air combat, straight behind your enemy. The aspect angle does not depend on my own heading. It's always measured from the boogie's tail to my plane. And when announcing aspect angles, you usually give a hemisphere, either right or left, together with the angle itself. The knowledge about the aspect angle is absolutely important, because together with the range, you can estimate the offset from and the turning circle of whatever you want to fight in the skies. And that's about it for the position geometry. Not that difficult, was it? Okay, let's continue with the attack geometry. 
The attack geometry involves uh, three terms you may have heard already. A lag pursuit, pure pursuit and lead pursuit. All of them describe the offensive pilot's flight path. And the offensive pilot in this scenario might be you if you are attacking and pursuing someone. It describes the offensive pilot's flight path in relation to his target. Uh, the explanation of all three terms is here quite simple. If your nose points right on your target, then you are in a pure pursuit. If it points in front of your target, you are leading him and are thus in a lead pursuit. If it points behind your target, you are in a lag pursuit. The not so simple point about them is to explain when you want to fly one or another pursuit, but uh, let me give it a try. You want to fly a lag pursuit to slow down your approach to the target or to gain range. You will want to do that whenever you are not in your target's plane of motion. When you are engaged in a turning fight, you will want to stay in a lag pursuit, but work towards a moment when you pull into a pure pursuit in order to fire a weapon. The pure pursuit is a pursuit type you don't want to fly sustained. You only want to point your nose at your enemy when firing a weapon. A sustained pure pursuit in a turning fight will end with you overshooting your enemy and thus losing all advantage, putting your enemy right at your six. You don't want that, obviously. This leaves us with the lead pursuit. And the lead pursuit is somewhat the counterpart of the lag pursuit. While the, the lag pursuit usually increases the range to your enemy, the lead pursuit decreases it. It's the, the fastest way to catch up with someone because you literally cut them off. Problem here is that if you don't want if you don't watch out and fly lead pursuit for too long or if you enter the lead pursuit too early, you will overshoot. And as I said, you really don't want that. Lead pursuit is uh, is the only way to fire your cannon. You have to lead your target in order to let your bullets hit it, at least in a turning fight. And last but not least, uh, that's it for the attack geometry, we have the weapons envelope. The weapons envelope describes an, an area around your target where your weapons or cannon will be effective. The envelope is always defined by the angle of range and aspect angle. Position geometry you remember from a few minutes ago. Each of these variables, angle of range and aspect angle, in the weapons envelope is defined by the weapons you are carrying, or better to say by the weapon you want to use. If, if you happen to carry an all aspect missile like the R73 or the AIM-120, then the weapon envelope will kinda look like a donut, with the outer ring as the, the maximum engagement range and the inner ring as the minimum engagement range. Also note the elliptical form of the envelope. If you are firing a missile on a target in a heads-on scenario, the sheer fact that your target is flying towards the fired missile obviously expands the range. So that's it about uh, for the introduction. We had three geometries, better to say two geometries and the weapons envelope. Um, a lot of stuff to learn if you never heard that. Yes, I am aware of that, but these are all points you should always be aware of when facing an enemy in a close air combat. You have to be aware of your position in relation to your enemy's position. And you have to know your weapons envelope. Anyways, I hope you learned something today and this was nearly all the theory I will teach you in this series. Uh, the rest uh, will be very very practical as I will demonstrate certain maneuvers in the next parts. Don't forget to subscribe if you don't want to miss out on any new videos, although not all of them will be in English. Have fun flying and stay safe up there. See you next time.